I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. We're finally back with clan battle season, back from the you know my vacation and everything, and now we're really ready to get back into strategy tips, techniques, and how to get better as always. But hey, before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support. If you see value in the channel, leave a comment below and help us support or grow to 2,000 subs. At 2,000, we're gonna give away free premium DD giveaway. All right, let's get to it. So this is Islands of Ice, man. This is fun. Now I don't know if you guys have noticed, but lately. Oh, meant not lately, but a few games for the past few days I've been playing. My team has just been really getting bombarded by these uh, really good teams. That seems like it always happens at the beginning of clan battle seasons when everybody's just starting right at the bottom and they work their way up to typhoon and hurricane leads and so forth. Uh, we are by no means like superior or anything. We're not that. We're just we're just having fun playing ships. We're not the pros here. But uh, let me know if you, what, what your thoughts are in the comments below. Like, is it because at the beginning of the season, obviously everybody starts at the bottom, so you're playing against top tier teams? It seems like we've been losing like seven or eight battles straight. We just can't seem to uh, you know win anything. So guess what I did? I called basically. Hey. You know what? None of our strategies are working. We're playing against top teams. You know what? Let's just screw uh, uh, our old techniques and just go YOLO all out. Go Lemming Train, YOLO, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we tried and see if it works. So this is the YOLO strategy, which by no means do I, you know, do I support. Uh, but this is we were just frustrated with what we were going on. And so, you know, we were going to be desperate at trying anything. And um, if you don't know what this is, is just take a look at it. Basically, uh, you're just taking your team and just plowing right through a cap. Normally you should what you normally should do. And I'll tell you about the pros and cons of doing this, okay? The first thing is most people like to go get a free cap, right? You know, one guy goes to Bravo and everybody goes to Alpha. Well, and that's the, that's basically what we want to try to do. Take two caps, and that's how you win a game. That's the basic strategy. Unfortunately, that strategy didn't be, hasn't been working for us all night. We have been losing seven to eight games straight in the past few days. Uh, team's been suffering. We can't even get past Squall League, uh, the very first league, but... Um, uh, th this is what, you know what, we're going to just try something out of the box and totally new. So here's what we did. We just took basically very simple, just plow right through. Now here are the good things. The good thing is you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ships, seven. That's a big seven there. Seven ships being able to fire on one suspecting target. So I mean, if you have, let's just say, I'm just using a hypothetical ship here. I don't know what I'm picking. Let's say I have a battleship here. Let's say you have a battleship right there. And he's pushing through here. Now, the, the basic simple strategy says that, hey, you know, if you have more ships, obviously superior firepower, you're able to focus fire on that ship. And that's kind of the name of the game that we were hoping for. Now, what's the downside of this? Well, the downside of this is obviously you're exposing an entire flank. Well, like what happens if the, you know, if, obviously if we're the green team here pushing through, we are exposing our eastern flank here. And then the red team can easily, if they have situational awareness to know that we're all over here. We'll push through Bravo cap and then come back around and press into our flank or come through the islands, islands right here. You know, they have these little pesky islands in the middle. They can even flank us that way. And now we only have one cap there too. And you're kind of going to kind of see that in the video. So again, one reason why I don't recommend this is Obviously, you're exposing a flank. You you give up two caps, um, but that's not what I was thinking was going to happen. Because you know what? What what's the worst got to do? We lose another round. We already lost seven in a row, right? But what I'm thinking is, they're probably going to send maybe one or two or maybe three ships to Bravo, right? They probably have that kind of a uh, makeup. They probably send a few guys to Charlie, and then they're going to send their um, their ships to Bravo. So I'll just kind of just give you basic generic. Uh, ships are they what do they have three destroyers one two three and then they had three cruisers it's kind of a you know a simple makeup of what they have over here now that's kind of like what i'm thinking they're doing now what i thought they were going to do is probably send maybe two destroyers there easy cap bravo or sorry charlie maybe one or two there and normally everybody can test uh alpha this is kind of what i'm thinking is going to happen so we kind of outnumber them superior firepower right we have basically seven ships to their four maybe so that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. We'll watch the video and see it actually how it turns out. So what's the pros about this again? Pros is you have superior firepower initially. Now, again, this is hoping that your team knows how to aim and shoot. You're going to basically have seven ships firing on one target, one at a time, picking them off. Once you eliminate one to two ships, you now have a numbers advantage. Now, what's the downside again? What did I talk about? They're going to cab Bravo Charlie, which I think they're going to do in this uh, game. 
But here's the problem that I potentially see. If they cap Bravo and Charlie, now they're kind of sp spread out, and all we have to do now is swing in. Either we're going to cap A, and then we have the potential to go to Bravo and then split the team if we have any survivors. This goes to Charlie. So this is kind of that uh, idea. They have to defend two fronts, and they can obviously, if I've always said uh, controlling this side of the map has been easier. Again, it has been working for us. I'm showing the pros and the cons. The, con the, the pro about doing this is you get to focus fire if they're coming at you. Let's say you're the enemy team. You get to focus fire uh, at, in a choke point easily here. The, now, the downside is what if they split the team into two? Now you have to defend and split your forces into two as well, um, you know, and you're not really sure where they're coming from. So, again, that could also split your team up at Charlie Bravo. You have to defend a much larger space right here, and that could be a downside there. So let's take a look at how the YOLO train YOLO lemming, whatever you want to call it, coming down this. I mean, we're desperate. We're just trying to get a win here, and we're going to see if any tactic outside of the norm actually works. But I hope you guys like it. Let's take a look at the video. All right, we're back here in the new uh, sh clan battle season with Islands of Ice, and uh, we are playing in the Ragnar. Ragnar, one of my favorite ships in the game. Let's take a look at it. Tier 10, European Special Premium Destroyer, available in the Armory for 27,000 steel, released August 11, 2021. The history behind it, the main tactical unit of the Swedish fleet wants to be a squadron of several destroyers. The Kronar class cruisers acted as squadron leaders, but in the 1940s, the construction of special squadron leaders were considered. And on March 21st, 1947, three draft designs were presented. And if you want to read some more about this summary of the Ragnar, it marries the all gun destroyer playstyle, just like the bigger brother or smaller brother, Friesland and Smallin. Friesland to the health pool and Elbing and, and adds small, Smallin's radar, basically. So you've got an Elbing, a Friesland, and a Smallin put together. She has She's a highly specialized ship, exceptionally good at bullying most opposing destroyers and capable of harassing enemy cruisers and battleships. Played well, she's a nightmare for opposing destroyer captains and lacking smoke when with poor handling, however, she can be focused off the board by coordinating enemy uh, coordinated attack if she finds it a bad position. Anyway, here we go right off the bat for Sherman calling for the focus fire as a point man DD player. We're going to go ahead and tell our fleet right there. As you can see, we're all pushing together seven versus one right here on the Sherman. Then Sherman just cannot do, even though the saps, uh, little main guns of the Schwar Sherman are very, very powerful. However, it is very lacking in the health department because it has a fixed amount of health and no heals. And especially when you're being focus fired, especially radar like I am, your smoke is pretty much useless so for Sherman all he can do right now is literally run away and hide and boom he goes down that's the first kill of the game in the first two and a half minutes right there as you can see this is exactly how we wanted to play it out we wanted to have focus fire and we are the point man DD player calling out all the shots right now and that is your role as a good destroyer player and again the 152 millimeter guns penetrate 30 mil armor so working on the Goliath very, very well. As you can see, we're getting those nice, juicy full pins right there, you can see, and hopefully start some more fires. And look, the Goliath is firing at us as always. As a good DD player, you want to be something that draws fire and makes it very difficult for people to waste their shots on, and it's very difficult to hit you at range. As you can see, the Ragnar has a great range, up to 13 kilometers. You can build out to 15 if you would like. The guns are very accurate, just like I mentioned earlier. This is like an Elbing with very, very good dispersion and accuracy. It's got the powerful two-gun setup like the Friesland, as well as it has that radar just like the small one. But however, unfortunately, it is a very sluggish, unmaneuverable kind of destroyer to play. As you can see, as we're turning left and right here, very, very sluggish and very large. Our Hanover takes out the Des Moines. Napoli takes out one of our summers, so we are down to destroyer. We are going to have to eliminate another destroyer player, ladies and gentlemen. Fortunately, the Holland is out calling for fire on him. He is gone. Now we are one versus one destroyer. That is a very, very good situation that you want to be in. So again, as always, we're going to be a good destroyer player. Start spotting ships, calling out fire, and start pressing the enemy and making sure that we start eliminating one player at a time off the map very, very quickly. Notice it's still anybody's game right now, ladies and gentlemen. Five versus four. This is not the situation we want to be in. We want to be in an unfair fight so that we win the match hands down. So here we go. We're going to start putting fire on the one main gun in the front on the Goliath. Even with one gun, the rate of reload on this thing is pretty darn good. That's why I like it. It's not a long-range gun build. This is more of a full DPM gun build. And boom, splash, one first kill of the day right there. 40,000 damage in the first five minutes, and that's exactly what I was telling you about. We want to eliminate as many players as possible. 
going back to the build the build again is at the end of the video but we're going to basically focus on the reload rate of the ragnar and when we dodge a ship once i see that um a hit marker or an exclamation point go off i immediately change my vector in velocity knowing that i can change the shot that montana was aiming for us that could have been dreadful Again, we're focusing on the reload rate. Look at the reload rate on the Ragnar. Really good. 2.1 seconds, and it's really, really some awesome firepower. Great fire start, as you can see right there. And ooh, look at that nice, weird maneuvering. Good job, Wargaming. Uh, coding there, <laughs> making the ship bounce off another ship. Pretty hilarious. But again, right here, most of the time, one-on-one -on -one versus Montana, I'm going to lose. It's not a very fair match right there. That's good on him. Unfortunately for him, he's going to have to deal with five other players, or four other players plus me, five total and it's very very difficult to mitigate i don't care what player uh, you are this is not based on skill this is just based on sheer amount of firepower placed on you there's no no it doesn't matter how your skill is in a ship your ship is going to still take damage and it can only take so much especially if you have a ragnar firing on you you have the secondaries firing on you from another ship you have a petro that's gearing uh, coming down on you so pretty much this is a you know unfair fight for the montana but that's exactly what we want to be in our other team is focusing on the Napoli, get him out of the game, and now we can just focus on the Montana. That will eliminate two more players off the map, leaving it with a five versus one. There goes the Napoli. That's exactly the situation you want to be in. Be in a unfair fight with the enemy. You want to have the total advantage. Now, here's the problem with the Ragnar. Ragnar's 152 millimeter guns, although powerful and fast firing, are very ineffective against heavy battleships like this that have 32 millimeter armor or higher. Because, like I said, it can, the guns only penetrate. 30 mil so it's really just good for superstructure as you can see what that's what i'm aiming i'm putting the horizon line on the superstructure i'm putting the tick mark about 14 and 2 uh, right on the superstructure and i'm continuously firing trying to start as many fires and boom slash two he goes down second kill of the game and then that is exactly how you would use the ragnar in that situation and you're always you're always putting fire on a ship you're always trying to start fires that's your role as a dd player you're spotting you're capping and you're calling out shots you're being that leader that leads from the front that's how you become a good destroyer player so look at this situation right here would you rather be in this situation or a fair fight like three versus three no i would rather take this all day i would rather have my ship start sailing especially with 13 minutes left in the game a ship is going to make it over there and we basically have you know can split our forces go to charlie and one go to bravo and that way you can hunt down the last destroyer player with ease and you can cap all the points and win by points that way so you those are the two tactical advantage you have again i'll speed this video up in a minute not to bore you but again, there's, I mean, this situation doesn't always work as, you know, we were desperate for a win right here. We just kind of say, hey, let's just YOLO, focus fire and see what happens. And that's why I kind of enjoy World of Warships, just a, just a sheer mass chaos, just big forces of ships colliding all at once. And you saw that is really, really fun and, and enjoyable. But anyways, um, again, the Ragnar, I really like it. Two guns, two turrets, Friesland style gameplay. It's got radar to get those pesky destroyers out of the smoke. It bullies destroyers. It bullies cruisers. It can you can see it can hold its own on a battleship with support. Uh, very sluggish, immaneuverable. Not the greatest. The slow uh, speed of it is not great as well. But as you can see, traveling across the map, it does take a fair amount of time. You can see the timer up there. It takes us about uh, a good five minutes to get across the map. Again, you got to play your your timing well. Look, our three cruisers take on uh, Charlie. We got Bravo with our battleship, and this is the situation you want to be in. And we kind of have to figure out where the Humphreys is at. He's probably heading to the east right there. But let me know what you think in the comments below. How's the strategy? What do you think? How, how's the Ragnar? What do you think of the Ragnar? Is, is it worth the steal? I, I mean, I, I like the, the Ragnar. It's really one of the powerful ships. The YOLO strategy, I think, right now is probably good with the amount of Typhoon, Hurricane League players uh, beginning at the beginning of the season. Let me know your thoughts on that. Is it is that true? Like, at the beginning of clan battles, everybody's starting at the bottom, so we're playing with every single good team out there, and we're just happening to get the bad batch uh, this uh, this week or so. But uh, anyways, I digress. But this is the kind of situation you want to be of YOLO. Uh, I think a lot of pro players uh, don't expect you to do the YOLO play, and they defend it pretty well. They know how to do it. But again, we were desperate for a win, and we wanted to see how it works. So we tried this out. Again, I like uh, at the end of the night, you just start playing, you know, five cruisers or five destroyers or whatever, trying different new tactics and strategies. Let me know what your tactics and strategies are this season, and a victory right there. We don't uh, kill the uh, Jay Humphreys, but you know, we had a good time capping all three caps, and you win by points that way. But as always, hope you guys enjoy the video. Like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support. 2,000 subs getting free premium DV giveaway. And you can see at the build at the end, we'll see how we did in the Ragnar today. 
Uh, yeah, we did a lot of damage, and we're getting 400,000 credits. I did a video about that, how Wargaming is scamming us on credits. Hopefully, these credits don't pass over to clan battles. Seems like we are making a little bit of money, but I am not running paint or flags on these uh, ships these days to save money. Here's the build focused on primary gun build, and uh, there it is. So, hope you guys are doing well. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time. Cheers.